Uh, last day, this is the 24th, and final bonus story for those of you who did not get to have school today, or did not get to have my class if you had school, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and give you one final somewhat happiest story. For those of you over here, make sure my desk is turned back the correct way. I didn't do this. Yes, sir. Just tell you me. Did. You did. Dude, you're a liar. Right. I am you. Less yelling at each other. Um, so, a couple of small gift for you here at the end. One, I found pictures I was going through of me from junior high. And so that is my seventh grade picture, and then also my eighth grade picture. You had a glow up. Ow! Um, and then the one next to it, the guy's name, Mr. Brown, he was my friend that I say in the wrestling story, was the one that uh, came in and cut me free when I was taped up on the dummy and stuff like that. He was the one that came to help me out. And then he is now a teacher over at HSC Junior High. Just keep on. And then the next two, Mark and Mike, that are up there. So this is the part where some of you, I'm getting ready to move your seats because I've learned that letting you sit next I'm to people is not I'm working. No, 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 no. That's apologizing. Uh, and so those are the two friends that when I talked about um, me losing friends in high school and then having that going down that dark path, those were the two friends that I, those are the two kids I hung out with all throughout junior high. Um, and then they both, because they had older sisters, went towards uh, drinking. The last one, Dana Casasa, uh, that was the girl I had a crush on in junior high. And so I figured since I exposed my soul this past uh, week with stories about myself, I would put up the embarrassing picture of the girl that I had a crush on. No, we did not go out with each other because I was a skinny dork uh, and she was super popular. But that was the girl I crushed on all throughout junior high. Uh, and the reason that we're wearing ties in that uh, bottom picture is that we were on the uh, football team. And if you're on the football team, they made you wear a tie for the school picture. Which leads me into my last story. My eighth grade year, as I mentioned to you guys before, I was really wanting to be popular. And so on that quest of popularity, one of the things I decided to do was to go out for the football team. The problem is, I'd never played football before. I'd never played any sport before. And so, but I still figured... Well, I can't even say I watched it on TV. I'd never even watched a football game. But I had watched popular kids be on the football team, and I figured that was the next step to what I wanted to do. And luckily, I went to Noblesville. And Noblesville was a small enough school at the time that they didn't have enough kids try out where they would cut you if you were not there. So as long as you went out for the team, you made the team. And that was all that we had to worry about. So, go out for the team. And I remember going out for the team, and you didn't have to try out as much as try, uh, try out for a position that you wanted. And I remember Coach Towel, because he actually later came to my wedding, which is another story. Um, and so Coach Towel was there, and he was like, all right, Broviak. He was like, have you ever played football before? I'm like, no, Coach. He was like, do you know what you're doing? I'm like, no, Coach. And he was like, oh, God. I'm like, yes, Coach. And he goes, all right. Um, well, let's try in different positions. I'm like, all right, sounds like a good idea. He's like, can you throw? I'm like, let's find out. And he gave me the ball, and I was like, hey, uh, and he was like, no, you can't throw it. I'm like, okay. He was like, let's try catching. I'm like, okay. And so I ran out, and he threw the ball, and, he, -ah! and I came nowhere close to it. Turns out football requires skill, uh, which I did not have. And he was like, well, you're not good at the skill positions. Let's try tackling. And I'm like, okay. Uh, I was still a uh, pipe cleaner for him at this time. So a kid ran at me, and he was like, can you tackle him? And I remember I jumped right on the kid, uh, and it looked like a, a ship dragging an anchor. Because uh, I just like hung on to him while he just kept running. I made him like slightly curved to the side. He was like, you're not good at tackling. I'm like, no, I'm not. So I got to stay on the team, uh, but I didn't get a whole lot of play time. I played a position that's called left out. Uh, it's where you spend a lot of time sitting on the bench. I did eventually get to work in positions. I kind of played defensive end on like the D team. Uh, which is like the about lower than like B or JV as I keep going down. And I was like, every once in a while you get to get in. And that was me. And then I did get to do uh, kickoff and kickoff return, which is where you get to come on there and apparently you can't mess things up too badly. I'm going to go ahead and save myself time now. Jake, Mariah, don't care where you go. Just got to move somewhere because it's distracting me and so I'm going to have to make you move. Just find a spot in that direction. Why can't she stay here and he would? Uh, no, I'm moving both of them because they have both directions. She keeps turning around talking to Gavin. So that's why I'm moving both of them. And so I had eventually got a spot on the team, uh, and that's all I cared about. But there were kids on the team who were not happy that I was there because they actually took football seriously. So my existence being there made them grumpy. One of them was a kid by the name of Darren Thompson. Um, and Darren Thompson um, was a bit was close to a greaser. 
Uh, he was sort of that scary kid, but he was also really good at football. And so me being on the team was an insult to him. And so he made it his goal to get me to quit. What he didn't realize that, I was both too stubborn and too dumb to quit the team. So he starts off by just verbally harassing me. Whenever I'm out there, he'd walk by. I was like, quit the team, you're awful. And I'm like, yes, I am. He's like, what? Uh, and so he would make fun of me, but that was not enough to make me quit. So he decided to up it to the next level. And I remember one of the things he did was during line drill. And the way line drill worked is the coach would split the team into two halves, and he'd have like the line on the side of the field, and half the team would line up, and the other team would face them. And when he blew the whistle, your goal was to hit the person across from you and then knock them down. Line drill. And I was like, ooh, all right. So you get down to the three-point stance, foot, foot, hand. You look at the person, whistle blows, boom, you hit them. I was awful. Boom, it's just like hitting someone with like a pool noodle. You just sort of slap them. Uh, and then I'd go flying backwards. Darren saw me doing this, and he's like, all right, we're going to use this as the opportunity to make you quit. So one of the times I line up, Darren, who was down to my left, because that's where all the good players were, and I was like down all the way to the right, like near the woods. And they're like, Darren got up when the coach wasn't looking, ran down to where I was, and lined up across from me, and made the kid that I was across from, like, move down somewhere else. I was like, okay, that's interesting. So I got down in three-point stance. Darren gets down in three-point stance and stares at me. I'm like, okay. Coach blows whistle, and I come up. But as soon as I do, Darren's faster and better than I am. And as soon as I'm halfway up, he trucks me and hits me straight in the chest and the helmet. And I went, whew, wham, onto the ground. I remember him stepping above me and just going, quit the team, and then went back. And I was like, oh, that was interesting. Oh, okay. But wearing pads, it didn't hurt. It was just annoying. So I got back up, and I was like, oh, that's the game we're going to play. I can do this. Three-point stance. Coach blows the whistle. This time I'm ready for it. So I pop up faster, and Darren trucks me again because he's good. Boom! I go flying backwards. I'm like, oh, it's a skill thing. And so this goes on for several days of practice. Him lining up, him hitting me, me going flying backwards. Eventually, he does it so much, he actually made me a better football player. Because there came a day when I lined up across from Darren, he stares at me and growls, and I remember he came at me, and from watching other people, I sort of learned what to do, I dug my toes in and leaned my body forward, so when he hit me, instead of me flying backwards, I just sort of slid backwards a little bit. And I came up and he hit me, I was like, and I was like, ha ha, because I was all excited, I was like, I didn't fall down. And I remember the look on his face, the anger, and I was like, ah, and he just went, boom. And I fell on back, and I was like, oh yeah, that happened. But I was excited because it was a baby step. So I remember getting back up, and I'd like to say he never knocked me down again. But he did. But he didn't knock me down every time, and I slowly got better. To the point where it was about half and half between me staying up and me getting knocked down. So Darren gets creative and decides to take it up to the next level. So the next week, he lines up across from me. And I can tell something's different with the way he's looking at me. So I'm like, oh, okay, we're going to try something new today. Let's find out. Three-point stance. And he looks over to his right and starts doing like a head thing. I'm like, what are you? And his friend, Rob Bennett, all of a sudden gets up from the line, runs down next to Darren, and moves that kid. So now it's me, Darren across from me, Rob there, some random kid. And I'm like, okay, and I'm looking at both of them. I'm like, that's different. Let's find out. Three-point stance. Coach blows whistle. I come forward, ready to hold on to it. Darren comes at me, and then Rob, who's there, instead of going at his kid, turns his body and also hits me. So both of them hit me at the same time. And I went into the ground. I was like, huh! and the kid across from Rob was like, huh? Huh? and Rob's like, oh, sorry, I must have missed you. And knocked me into the ground. And they both stood over me like, you should quit the team, you suck. And I'm like, okay. And I got back up. And they didn't do it every time because the coach would yell at Rob whenever he noticed Rob missing. And so, but they did it often enough that they kept beating on me throughout the season. I eventually found one of my few skills on the team, which was on uh, field goals and extra points. And it was not the kicking. It was being on the defense because I was tall and gangly like a tree. Whenever they would try to kick the ball, I could be on defense. And I could go <laughs> up into the air and I had a chance of actually hitting the ball. That was my only good skill was being tall with big gangly arms. So last game of the season, 
we are playing against some team. We're at the high school as opposed to the junior high. And we're out there. It was a nighttime game, and there was lights on. And it was all exciting. I remember it came down to the very end of the game, and uh, we were ahead, but the other team was getting ready to kick a field goal for the win. And it's like that thing that you see in movies and you get all excited about. And I actually got to go out onto the field for the defense when they were getting ready to kick a field goal. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is my time to shine. This is going to happen. I remember getting out there. They hiked the ball. I remember running up and then jumping and going full tree mode up into the air. Kid kicked the ball, and my fingertips actually hit the ball. I said like that. My hands went back. I could feel the contact, and then the ball ended up falling short, and we won. And it was one of those things that you see in movies where the whole team's like, ah, yeah. And we're all excited. I'm like, I did a thing. I did a thing. And we all went running off to the side towards the coach, and the coach was all excited. And I was like, I know this year has been rough, but this is the moment where it all counts. And I was super excited about it. And we go over there, and the coach was like, who did that? Who blocked that punt? Who blocked that kick? That was incredible. And it was my time to shine. And so I step up. And before I could speak, Darren steps in front of me and goes, that was me, coach! And high fives the coach. And the whole team was like, good job, Darren! And I was like... But there was nothing I could do. They were already talking about it and going off. And if I said anything, I'm like, whatever, it was you. You've never done anything. And I was like, you? I was like, you know what? Fine. Whatever. It was the last game. I know I did a thing. I don't need everyone cheering. We'll be okay. But it made me mad, and we moved on from it. The next week, we had our final practice, where you have, like, turn in pads and practice, or in your jerseys and stuff like that. And I remember we were all in the boys' locker room, and I was sitting with a group of my friends on the team. We were sitting there talking about how the year had gone and stuff like that. And I had gone to go turn in my pads. And our, our locker room was like ours, where it has like little twists and turns and stuff like that. And I'd come around, and I'd put my pads down, and I was going back to like the little area. And I was walking down the little aisle area, and I saw Darren coming towards me. But I was like, you know what? I'm done with him. I don't care. So I'm just walking and not caring about him whatsoever. But as he passed me, he did that shoulder bump thing where you're like, Whack! And you hit a person. I remember he was walking on that side of me as I walked by, and he hit me, and it like made me stumble to the side. And for some reason, that ticked me off. Like, that pushed me over the edge. And I went at him. And I remember I jumped at him, and I grabbed his shirt in that little front area right there, and I picked him up and put him against the locker. I have no idea... But when you see the movies, like the, the mom who lifts the car off the baby, and like, Rawr! that's what happened. It was like a chihuahua lifting up a bulldog. Like, Rawr! Rawr! And so I picked him up and threw him against the locker. I remember slamming him backwards and yelling, what is your problem? And just like smashed, was like, wang, 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 wang. And on the last one, it hit me. What are you doing? As I was slamming him into it. Yes. Quickly. Yes, they're for... Time out. On the last one, I realized as I slammed him up there, it hit me, what are you doing? And from the corner of my eyes, I can see the entire team like turning and staring at us. And I look up, and Darren's eyes are huge, and he's staring at me. In my head, I'm like, are you just, what did you, how did you, and I just like, all of like, he starts to slide down, and he goes, do you want to fight? And I didn't know how to answer that. So I go, yes, because it seemed like the right answer with everyone staring at me. And he goes, fine, at the end of practice, we're going out to the baseball diamond, and we're going to fight. And I went, Okay. And then I let go of him. And then I remember letting go of him and then turning and walking back towards my friends. And as I was walking, they're like, did, did you just challenge Darren to a fight? I'm like, did, did I just challenge him to a fight? They're like, I think you did. They're like, he's going to kill you. And I'm like, he's probably going to kill me. Like, they kept like, have you ever been in a fight? And I'm like, no. I'm like, I punched my brother once and I got grounded for it. And like, that's it. I'm like, oh, Darren gets in fights every weekend. And I'm like, I know. But you know what? I was really mad. I'm like, you know what? I don't care. If I hit him once, I'm happy. That's all I care about. So we went from turning in our stuff to we had like a little award ceremony at the end. 
And Noblesville uh, has like instead of the LGI, they have like a movie theater area where it's like a bot. It's not like actual movie theaters, like an LGI, like chairs, so you can, like all like stare at the person presenting. And I remember we were in there, and Darren was down the front because Darren got awards because Darren was good at football as he should have been. And I was like up in the back area because there's no way I was like a kid gets knocked down the most awards. And so it's like an auditorium. And so I was up in the back, and I remember he kept turning around and looking up to me and doing the. <laughs> I look at him and be like, <laughs> but it was not intimidating whatsoever. And I was like, that's right. And my friends kept trying to give me advice. And they're like, all right, um, when you get into a fight, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to punch him first. Whoever punches first is probably going to win the fight. I'm like, but, but I've never hit anybody before. I'm like, that's fine. They're like, you just aim for the face and you just keep swinging. I was like, okay, aim for the face, just keep swinging. I can probably do that. And they kept trying to give me advice, like, you're going to be there for you and stuff like that. So eventually the awards thing ends. I was like, I wanted it to take for hours, but it didn't. And we get done. And once again, nowadays, it's one of those things where how could this possibly happen? But the whole team, as a team, just all gets up and leaves the building, goes out the back door to where the baseball diamond is. And the coach was like, where are y'all going? Okay, have a good time. And we all went out as a team, went across the little area, and went out to this little baseball diamond. And I remember, end of football season, so it was out late October, so it was cold outside, there was like frost on the ground, so we went out there, and we went to, sorry, hiccup, where the baseball diamond was, and we went to home plate. And I remember Darren and I were standing across from each other, and then it was just like you see in the movies, there was a ring of kids all around us, like all cheering and screaming. And the home plate was there, and we're standing across from each other, and I did the thing that you see in movies. I'm like, aha, I'm like, hands up. I didn't do that. I hadn't invented it yet. Uh -huh. I was like, all right. I just like put my hands up like that, and then Darren's just like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know what you're doing. So I'm like, all right. And then we just face each other and do that whole uh, that walk around thing. We're like, oh, yeah. That's and so like, I'm trying to kick in my head. I keep saying, like, just extend your arm. You just extend your arm. Arm goes out and make contact. Arm, come on, just do it. Come on, arm, come on. Just hit him. Just arm. And I couldn't get my arm to extend, but I kept trying to tell my hand what to do. And Darius is, like, looking at me the whole time, like, it's coming. Any moment, you just wait. This hand's going to come. And then he helps make the decision for me. As I'm sitting there trying to get my hand to do it, and Darren just goes, wham! And it hit me right in the nose. And it hurt. And my head went back. And... They talk about, like in movies and TV shows, like the going red and having like that rage moment. In all of my life, this is that only rage moment I felt. But when he hit me, it was like, that hurt. And I didn't hit him back. I launched myself at him like an angry cat. And I went, and I just jumped straight at him. And I remember his eyes getting big because I landed on him and rode him to the ground. And he hit the ground. When he did, I just started swinging. I was hitting him in the face, in the oh, chest. Yeah, bro, yeah. I was hitting the ground. Yeah. I bounced yeah. off. Yeah. I mean, it was. I didn't care what I. I mean, there's like birds going by. I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, whatever I could hit, I was smacking it. And I remember he's like rolling back and forth. He wasn't even swinging back. I mean, I did not care. Now. I don't think I hurt him a lot. I think it's like a six-year-old hitting you with a pool noodle. But that's what it was. I just kept going. And then all of a sudden, I remember being pulled off of him. And my, my arms kept going. They're like, I was new to this thing. I'm like, huh. I'm like, what's going? And they're like, fight's over, fight's over. I'm like, okay, good, fight's over. I'm like, I hit that guy a lot. And then his friends came running in. And he was friends with a bunch of the popular kids. And they came running in. And they're like, Darren wins, Darren wins. And I remember like going, what? And then Darren gets up, and I mean, he probably wasn't like beat to a pulp once again, pool noodle, but I'd hit him a lot, and he gets up and he goes, yeah, street rules, you bled first, I win. And I did bleed first. When he hit me in the nose, blood did come out. And I remember, this was my quote, I'm not done hitting you like yet. I'm not done hitting you yet. I liked it. Because I really enjoyed the sensation of hitting him. It brought me happiness. And he goes, it doesn't matter. I won. And his whole group all turns around and leaves. And I remember being upset. I was like, I, I, I liked the part where I was hitting him. Like, that was a good part. And my friends all came over like, what was that thing you did? And I'm like, what? Like, you kind of like, ah, like went at him. And I'm like, I don't know. I just started like punching. Like, that was not punching. Uh, and so, like, talking to them, we both, like, our groups walked away, went over to the side area, 
and went down to the cars, and just like a big group, we all walked down to get in our cars and like to get a ride home. And I remember like, still had like blood coming down from the front, I was still in shock, because he only hit me the one time, uh, but it was a good hit, and walking down to go get in my mom's car. And she had that gray Bonneville that I showed you in the other picture. I remember like going down and like sitting down into that front passenger seat. And it's like sitting down, like looking over my mom, and she's like, honey, yeah, what's wrong with you? And I was like, what? I was like, oh, forgot about that. I was like, oh, um, I got in a fight. She goes, what? I'm like, I got in a fight. And so I go, hey, there's this kid, Darren, who's been harassing me the entire football season and pushing me around. And I finally got upset about it, and I did something about it, and he and I got into a fight. And then she goes, you know, fighting is wrong, right? And I went, yeah, I know fighting's wrong. She goes, did you win? <laughs> and I went, I don't know. And she went, what do you mean you don't know? I'm like, well, he hit me, and then I hit him a lot, and then everyone else said it was over, and they said he won, but I wanted to hit him more. My mom goes, huh, okay, well... Do you want ice cream? <laughs> and I went, yes, I do. And my mom took me to Dairy Queen. And I remember after my fight, I got to go have an Oreo Blizzard. Uh, and I got to sit in Dairy Queen with my mom and then like tell her all about the football season and then getting into the fight with Darren and sort of how it ended. And that was the only fight I ever got into. Now with that, the follow-up from it is that I never really interacted with Darren a whole lot after that. We weren't in a whole lot of the same class. We sort of just saw each other at football. We'd see each other in the hallways on occasion. But it wasn't like he continued to bully or harass me because he just wanted me to quit the team, and I refused to quit the team, and then football season was over, so he was kind of done with me. Um, but it was a thing that was like brought up over the years after that, where random people were like, hey, remember that fight with Darren? I'm like, yeah, like you were kind of crazy. And I was like, yeah, that's probably a word for it. Um, but um, that's pretty much where the story ends. And I had a kid earlier ask me, uh, Mr. Roviak, um, what's the moral of that story? That's a good question. Yeah. yeah, I didn't really have a moral to it as much as I was just more trying to entertain you as opposed to anything else. Sure, we'll go stand up for yourself. Uh, and sometimes... Fighting is good because I definitely did not regret hitting him whatsoever. Uh, that was definitely enjoyable. Um, with your last time with me, did you guys have any other questions or stories that I could think of that you guys have? Is it done? Uh, Donald Duck is a Disney character. I've never fought Donald. He'd make funny little squeaky sounds, so it'd just be kind of awkward and weird. Me. Oh. Did you say you like taught in Sweden? No, I taught in Scotland. Uh, my favorite, oh, I can talk about that in a second. Favorite teacher that's not me? Yeah, or friend. I like Fossil because he's sassy. And I, that's the same reason I like Spider Man. He's my favorite superhero because in the comic books, Spider Man makes fun of you while he beats you up. Uh, and for some reason, that always entertained me because I figured if, I, if I'm not, if I ever became a superhero, I would totally sass somebody as I beat them up the entire time and make fun of them, which made me smile. Uh, yeah, the reason I have the Scotland things up there, I have a Scotland map there, and there's a Scotland flag over there above R2, and that's where that big blue and white X is over there, there's the Scotland flag. Um, after, well, one, I am part Scottish. Um, the side of my family that's not Broviac is both called Duncan and Campbell. And so I am half Scotch and then half <coughs> Slovakian. But in college, I got the chance to go teach in Scotland. And so I did teach there for about three months uh, about four months, three, four months after I graduated college, I went over there and taught there for a while, which was interesting. Um, by the way, in Scotland, they speak English, but it's with an accent that is hard to understand. Um, if you guys ever watch The Simpsons, um, there's the, the Willie. When he speaks, that's like a very clear form of Scottish. Because I remember walking in to my classroom, because I had like, I actually taught junior high when I was over there, and they'd be like, hey, how you doing? Uh, where are you from? Are you from America? Uh, what's it like with America? Is it, is it like being in here? Is it like, I mean, like, different? Are you like, are you okay with anything like that? And I was like, did you just say words? Like, what do you mean did I just say words? Of course I said words. That's what I've been saying. I say words the entire time. I'm like, did you say more words? And like, the entire, like, that's how it was nonstop, and I was just, like, oftentimes I'd have to record it and like, play it back, because I'm like, I don't understand the words coming out of your mouth. 
Uh, but then I eventually got used to it. But it was definitely weird having someone speak English and English words and then not understand the words that were coming out of their mouth the entire time. Did you have a thing? That one. There? Um, theirs was a lot more open. They almost had like a recess type thing where you had like a free period and then you had lunch and you could choose to either like run around the school or you could choose to eat during that free time and so they were a bit more open. But their school is different and you're allowed to like drop out like at 14. Um, and they do a big thing where when you leave 8th grade, you have to decide at that time if you're going to college or not. No, you can start going to college like at 17, it's a little bit different, but I didn't like that fact I mean, that you had to, at 14, decide if you were going to go to college or go to trade school, because a lot of 14-year-olds have no idea what they're going to do, because they're in completely immature, but that's how they set things up there.